If I find the time to read all of these books before the end of the year, I will have read 3,456 pages. Hello! I realized recently that some of my favorite reads from the past year have also been very long books, and I think it's this experience when I fall so in love with the, the story and the characters and the writing style that I don't want this book to end. I'm happy that it goes on for hundreds and hundreds of pages and I get completely immersed and lost in this world that the author has created. So some examples of books that have given me this feeling recently, uh, there is Demon Copperhead, this heartbreakingly beautiful epic journey of survival of a boy born into nothing who overcomes much adversity to survive into adulthood. And there's Solenoid, a very strange and fascinating story of a man obsessively keeping a notebook. I'm trying to understand the meaning of his existence and every once in a while slipping into these strange other regions of uh, experience and hidden corners of the world. It is so, it is so unique, uh, this book. And In Ascension by Martin McInnes, this, this wonderfully immersive story of a scientist um, who's trying to understand the origins of life uh, on Earth and, um, and studying nature and um, traveling to the furthest regions of, uh, of both our world and into outer space, and, uh, but also exploring her emotional inner journey. Um, so such a beautiful, inventive science fiction book. And Paul Murray's The Bee Sting, this great family epic, looking at the different perspectives of family members and all of the the secrets uh, that they keep from each other and the lies um, that they tell to possibly tragic uh, effect and and this this novel has so many suspenseful moments and um, it kept me completely gripped throughout. So I decided I want to set myself the task of reading some more great big books before the end of the year. I define a big book as any title which is over 500 pages long and part of the the challenge of starting a big book is knowing it's going to be a big time commitment uh, for weeks, if not months, of, of committing to a, a book. And I think all five of these titles, which I've um, picked, sound really fantastic. So I want to go through and discuss each of them and why I'm so interested in reading them. And I want to know um, if you have read them, if you would recommend them, uh, or if you're interested in reading them as well, or if you have other big books that you are hoping to get to before the end of this year. So to start off with, there's a recently published novel that I just love the sound of so much called Fane by Anne-Marie MacDonald. This takes place in the late 19th century on the border between Scotland and England in a grand estate um, called Fane, um, overseen by a lord um, who has, uh, who's very mysterious and who seems to only emerge at night. And he has uh, a daughter who's uh, despite being very um, clever and very strong, um, comes up against a lot of adversity um, because of the strictures of, of the time, of the society in the, that time period. And, um, and this just sounds like such a, a sweeping, like, gothic story that, um, that I, just, I just love the, the sound of. Um, the, the author, Donald Ryan, um, praises it, um, saying, it's a wonderfully clever, funny book which carries the weight of its themes of identity and self-image with grace and passion. Um, it's called A Page-Turning Queer Story of Lawning and Belonging, History and Identity. And I'd read Anne-Marie MacDonald's um, novel Fall on Your Knees many years ago, which is also a very big book and one that I just absolutely loved. So I've been wanting to read more of her writing, um, so there is that. Then also recently, um, if you heard the news, the Norwegian author Jan Foss won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And um, these are, they come in three books, um, although they've been published as one title, um, which is his um, Septology uh, books. Um, I think there's seven in total, um, so there's multiple different ones in, in each um, book. And, uh, and so I 
only read um, this first book, The Other Name, a uh, number of years ago, um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's really intellectual, in-depth, um, fascinating writing um, that's, that's very beautiful as well. Uh, but uh, I, I just didn't have like the concentration at the time to get to the, the, the second book in the series. And then when the third book came out, I, I wanted to get to the second one first. And, you know, it's that, that thing of, of feeling like you're always behind as a reader, <laughs> like you ever get that. And um, so, yeah, I, I did really um, enjoy re the other name, um, although I had some issues with the very end of the book, like the very, very end of the book. Um, so I'm interested to see how he carries that over. And um, so I'm interested to, to return to this trilogy. And I think I would reread the first book before then getting to the next two books, because it has been quite a while since I read it. So I want to familiarize myself with the story again, which is about an artist named Osle, who lives in a very remote life, um, very reclusive life. Um, he only really communicates with his neighbor and it's he's exploring the memories of his past and his artistic process and his um, his his grappling with spirituality. And, uh, and how that is explored, um, is really interesting. Um, though it's in this, this quite claustrophobic, um, small community environment of, um, this Norwegian town. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's really wonderfully done. And so I think it'll be atmospheric, um, for the, the winter period too. Now, I also want to read um, a classic, um, which I've been meaning to get to for ages, which is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. So I read The Moonstone um, for the very first time last year, um, which is kind of a prototype of the detective novel. Um, I found it absolutely gripping, um, so wonderfully written with wonderful comic touches as well. Um, he, he writes in such an atmospheric way, um, but also um, in creates these characters that are very funny um, to read about as, as well. And the, the woman in white is like known as like a gothic masterpiece. Um, it's, a, it's about a, a, the, a kind of typical story of like a poor man that falls in love with a woman, but she's are already betrothed to this um, wealthier man and uh, but the wealthier man in this story has a lot of mystery surrounding him in secrets and um, so it's uncovering that and the past of that story and uh, so yeah I think this will be just a wonderful um, atmospheric tense read for the autumn period you know especially going into to Halloween um, I think this will be so much fun to read. Now, there's um, a fascinating book, a uh, work of Catalan literature that was just um, published recently. The author completed writing it in 1982, but it's just been published and translated into English. It's Summa Kawatika um, by Ventura Amit Lur, translated from the Catalan um, by Douglas Suttle. And, uh, and this follows the, the story of a man that is, uh, that comes of age in this, um, rising republic, which gradually turns into a dictatorship. And, uh, and the, the, the story behind this is the, the author wanted to present this alternative version of history from, because it's often said about, you know, history is recorded by the, the people in power, the people who have an agenda for what they want to be recorded and what details um, they, they want to be passed down and, um, and what they want to be left out. And so this is trying to account for these things. And it, and it um, is um, because it's work of Catalan literature that was written during that time. And um, it was completed um, just, um, I think, like four or five years years after the end of Franco's dictatorship. And it's also something of an experimental work that blends fact and fiction. And I, I think that just sounds absolutely fascinating. I know that that Sean on his uh, channel, uh, Travel Through Stories, um, he's also been reading this recently. And um, yeah, it just sounds so good. And then finally, um, the fifth book I want to read before the end of the year uh, is Barkskins by Annie Prue, which I've had on my shelf for ages. And I just got this sense recently that it's I think it's time to finally get to this this book. And I love the gold leaf on the, the cover. Um, it's a bit hard to almost read the uh, the author name and the, the title if you hold it a certain way. Uh, but this is, yeah, a big epic story that is, uh, I think, around 700 pages long. And it's a, it's a, a multi-generational family epic, which is 
kind of one of my favorite kinds of storytelling. This comes with a family tree and I'm a sucker for novels that feature a family tree. And it's about two um, Frenchmen that, that travel to America as woodcutters or barkskins. And um, then it follows uh, the successive generations of um, their families throughout time and across different continents and has a lot to do with um, the environment and, and climate change and addressing um, those issues, um, as well as telling um, this great big epic family story. And I've loved reading Annie Prue's writing in the past and, and have always wanted to read something else by her. And this is one that I've always wanted to get to. So those are the big books that I'm hoping to read before the end of this year. Like I said, I'd love to, to know if um, you have read any of these or if you're interested in reading any of these or if you have your own goals of big books that might have been sitting on your bookshelves for a really long time that you've been meaning to get to but want to set yourself the goal of reading them before the end of the year. Let me know about that in the comments below. I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.